What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Netflix series Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 1. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramashcreen. That's patreon.com slash ramashcreen. Let's rock this. First up, I would like to say thank you to Netflix for granting me the screeners to the first six episodes of this new season. Now, it goes without saying that even though I will not be spilling spoilers here, this review is mainly for those of you, my fellow Stranger Things fans, who already know what's up. Okay, what can I tell you without giving too much away? God, this is tough. Dancing around some of the details is not gonna be easy. But you know what? Here I go. Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 1 is awesome. I know, I know, the word awesome has been loosely used, but I truly mean it. And I think what got me stoked overall is that week after week, we get bombarded by other Netflix shows that range from it's just okay to God, that was pretty awful. So for Stranger Things to finally return again without showing signs of slowing down, I'm like, damn, how I've missed this level of quality story telling. It feels good to have that back. Now, Netflix only gave me the first six episodes, but from what I've seen so far, this may well be the show's scariest season yet. I kid you not, season four is a lot more fun and a lot more terrifying. And probably the best way to describe it is that this is a Nightmare on Elm Street version of Stranger Things, which is why Robert Englund's guest appearance is very fitting. Season four is basically if the late great Wes Craven had directed Stranger Things. So it's part new school life, part mass hysteria, and part bloody terror. I'm talking the kind of terror that makes Demogorgon look like a house pet. Created by the Duffer Brothers, in Stranger Things Season 4, it has been six months since the Battle of Starcourt Mall, which brought destructions to Hawkins. Struggling with the aftermath, our group of friends are separated for the first time, and navigating the complexities of high school hasn't made things easier. In this most vulnerable time, a new and horrifying supernatural threat surfaces, presenting a gruesome mystery that, if solved, might finally put an end to the horrors of the Upside Down. I obviously am not allowed to go into specifics about this new supernatural Upside Down villain or his main objectives, but I can tell you that before the screaming and the running happens, Eleven is having a hard time adjusting in school. She keeps getting bullied and she's not able to fight back, literally. You see, season 4 basically follows the formula that we often see in sequels. By that, I mean the writers would split the character apart from each other in small groups, and the other formula is make the lead character vulnerable to the point where she questions her worth, her value, her purpose. This strategy allows for everybody to get a fair share of screen time, but on top of that, it allows for us to see what it is that they're made of when they are left to their own devices, so to speak. Speaking of the characters, their haircuts in this new season are so weird in a cool way, of course. I mean, there's 80s hairstyle and then there's Stranger Things 80s hairstyle, you know? Where halfway through the spray, the barber just said, eh, this'll do. <laughs> and the show brought in actor Eduardo Franco to play the new comic relief. And for the most part, Eduardo does fine, but he seems kind of typecast because a clueless chill boy pothead is all that Eduardo ever plays in every gig. Plus, some of his character's humor in this one sometimes feels misplaced. Now, there's a lot more emphasis on Max this time around, the same way it did on Billy in the previous season. And I don't mind that because not everything has to always revolve around Eleven. An actress Sadie Sink, who plays Max, gives a compelling performance. But I gotta be honest with you, it took me a bit of getting used to seeing these characters now in their high school age, with their voices changing, and some of them are even now taller than we remember them. But having said that, along with them growing up, the evil forces they face are also getting more difficult to beat. Some of the will they, won't they relationship dynamics are a bit wobbly, but I chalk that up to the writers setting things up for what hopefully becomes a gut-wrenching moment down the road later on. Okay, if you're wondering what happens to Hopper in the Russian Gulag, all I can say about that without getting myself in trouble is, is that that aspect of season 4 is like a cross between the movie Bridge Over River Kwai 
and Prison Break series. It's intense, it's brutal, and it puts actor David Harbour's physical endurance to the test. On top of which, that part of the storyline has a ton of surprises around every corner. Some may go the way you want them to, and some may not, but you'll be glued to the screen either way. As I'm winding down, if you thought the never ending story song in last season was really cool, well wait till you get a load of the many many other 80s nostalgic references that season 4 has in store for you. And it's also a brilliant criticism of satanic panic. You see, in the previous seasons, Dustin and friends seem to be able to roam much more free in their little hunt and their chase and their mystery investigation. But that's not the case anymore, with the whole town raining holy hell upon on them. This time it's a lot more crowded and a lot more complicated for them to navigate their way around. But that is part of what makes season 4 volume 1 so richly tantalizing and I cannot wait to watch the rest of it.